the majority of the supplement industry is a scam. But the supplements themselves can be good for you. In fact, some can save your life. But the problem is that there are hundreds and thousands of supplements out there and it's very hard to know which one is good for you, which one is useless and which one can even be really bad for you. A few years ago when I started taking my health seriously, I started looking at books and podcasts and I started buying all of these supplements that they were recommending and before you know it, I was taking like 20 plus supplements and guess what? My health did not get better. So I had to take a step back and look at the science. If I am to take a supplement, I only want to take a supplement that has been clinically studied, that is science backed and that is absolutely necessary. So after looking at all these recommendations and doing my own studies, I narrowed it down to these five. So let's look at the five supplements that I take on a daily basis and that I recommend everybody to take. Now, before we get started with the list, I want to tell you that if you are eating a full healthy meal, you're not deficient in any of the micronutrients and you're not sick, then you can get away with not taking any supplement. Not everyone has to take it. But the problem is that 90% of today's diet is missing one thing or another. So a lot of people end up with deficiencies and the deficiency in one thing, however small, can cause big problems in your body. It can have consequences on your mood, your metabolism, your immune system, and so on. So that's why we need to supplement our diet with these micronutrients. With that being said, let's get started. And the first supplement on our list is vitamin D. Now, vitamin D is one of the most studied supplements out there. It has been clinically studied and it has been proven to be very effective. And one of the reasons why I recommend everybody to take this is because most of the people are deficient in vitamin D, especially people of color. Studies have shown that 75 to 85 percent of people of color are deficient in vitamin D and this deficiency creates a lot of problems. And this is because vitamin D is a crucial vitamin that is involved in muscle growth, bone strength, immune system, inflammation, and even mental health. Now, vitamin D is created in your body after sun exposure, but the problem is that with today's lifestyle, most of us do not get enough sun. That's also why people of color have a low level of vitamin D, by the way, because of the melanin that blocks the sun. So to fix this deficiency and avoid all these problems, all you have to do is take this supplement, vitamin D. And there have been studies and studies looking at vitamin D supplementation and its effects. Several studies and clinical trials have shown that vitamin D supplementation improves muscle function, bone health, mood, and most importantly, immune function. It helps you fight off a lot of diseases. By the way, I'm going to leave the studies that I talk about in the description if you want to look at them yourself. Now, there are different types of vitamin D, but vitamin D3 is what you want. And you should take at least 2000 IU or international units of vitamin D3 on a daily basis. The second supplement is omega-3 fatty acids. That's right, omega-3. This is another one that we need to take because most of us do not get enough from our diet. This study looking at dietary intake 
found that only 30% of the population gets enough omega-3 fatty acids. That means that the rest of us, 70%, do not get enough omega-3 fatty acids. And we definitely need enough omega-3 fatty acids. They are responsible for supporting your heart health, improving your brain function, reducing inflammation, and even improving your mood. A deficiency in omega-3 fatty acids can lead to chronic inflammation, cardiovascular problems, cognitive decline, and even depression. So this is another one that we definitely should take. I take about one gram or a thousand milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids on a daily basis. You want a good balance between EPA and DHA fatty acids, but the total should be about one gram. The next supplement is magnesium. I've just started taking this one this year and it has been a game changer. It has improved my overall mood and energy. It has improved my sleep and for some reason it has cured my chronic headaches. Magnesium is used throughout our body. It is a cofactor that supports the function of over 300 enzymes. And these are enzymes involved in energy production, nerve transmission, muscle function, bone function, and more. Magnesium deficiency leads to bone problems, muscle cramps, migraines, cardiovascular issues, and metabolic syndrome. And metabolic syndrome in particular can increase your chances of a heart attack, a stroke, and diabetes. So we definitely need our magnesium. Now, there are many different forms of magnesium out there, but I like to take either magnesium glycinate or magnesium citrate. And this is because these ones have the highest bioavailability. And that just means that most of it is gonna be absorbed and used by your body. Do not take magnesium oxide, magnesium chloride, or magnesium sulfate. These have the lowest bioavailability, meaning that most of it is not going to go into your body. And in terms of quantity, the recommended dose is about 300 milligrams. Now, supplement number four, creatine. Now, a lot of people think that creatine is only used by people who go to the gym and they lift weights, but I really do believe that everybody should take creatine because creatine is good for muscle mass, muscle strength, muscle recovery, and overall muscle health but it is also crucial for brain function and metabolic health. And we all need that, right? And the recommended dose of creatine is five grams. And it's almost impossible to get that amount from diet alone. That's why we need this supplement. Now, if you take creatine and take plenty of protein and protein supplements along with lifting heavy weights, your muscles are going to be much bigger compared to doing all of that without creatine. Now, I'm fully convinced that everyone should try to get as much protein as they can in their diet and get as much muscle strength as they can. Increasing muscle strength and muscle mass is one of the best things you can do for your health and longevity. But that's gonna be another video. For now, I recommend that you start taking creatine along with increasing protein intake. And what type of creatine should you take? Creatine monohydrate. Do not take any other form. There are so many other forms out there, but I say stay away from them. Now, supplement number five. The last supplement is going to be whatever you are deficient in. 
I know, I know. It's not a particular supplement, but this is actually one of the most important points of this video. Some people are low in iron, zinc, potassium, vitamin B, and other micronutrients. And because of that, that can have big detrimental effects. But that doesn't mean that you should go on taking all these supplements because having too much can be a big problem as well. So for these other supplements, I recommend that you get tested, determine which ones you are deficient in, and only then can you start taking them. If somebody comes to you and tells you that they've taken an iron supplement and it's changed their life, that doesn't mean that you should go on and take iron because maybe they were deficient and you're not. And too much iron in your body is gonna cause problems. And the same goes to most of these that I mentioned. So that's why if you're not feeling well, you should get tested, get some blood work done and see what you are deficient in. I've seen people's lives change after taking vitamin B, zinc, or even iron. So if you haven't been feeling well, go to your doctor, get tested. You might find that you're deficient in some of these micronutrients. And by the way, I'm recommending this for because most of us are deficient in these and they have been clinically tested over and over again to improve our health and too much of them does not cause a lot of problems unless you take like five times the dosage. But that's the video guys, five supplements that you should take. Now, what about multivitamins? Well, it turns out that multivitamins are mostly useless. Now, there are very rare cases where they can be useful, but it's not that many. I actually made a video about multivitamins, so check it out here, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.